Good afternoon and welcome along to the GMA Picks. Uh, here we are again for, I believe, the fourth talk. This time it was uh, with flight director uh, Stefan. Stefan, welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. And um, yeah, how, how are you today? How do you find yourself? Hi, thanks for having me. I'm fine here and I'm, I'm happy to be here with you. Great. Well, let me just tell you a little bit about the GMA picks. As I've mentioned mm -hmm. to our to our filmmakers that we've spoke to thus far, uh, our jury here, the GMAs, we've we've decided because you know this year is has been particularly trying for for everybody, no matter what you might do, uh, especially for uh, you know for filmmakers and for live events and and such as ourselves with the red carpet and all the award ceremonies and all that stuff and and. As filmmakers, uh, of which I am one myself, um, you know, we love that. Of course, we love our craft. We love making our movie or documentary or music video, whatever it might be, telling our story. But then, of course, when you get to the red carpet, albeit you might be absolutely shattered, that's the moment when you get to enjoy yourself. That's the moment when you get to um, hopefully be celebrated, be awarded, be recognized for your for your work. But unfortunately, this year, that is unfortunately, uh, it's not possible to bring everyone together. And especially because the GMAs is an international National Festival, so it really didn't feel right with us. Um, it didn't feel that we would be true to ourselves to, mm -hmm. to limit our audience only to those who find themselves in the UK at the moment. So I think our team have decided, uh, have come, uh, come up with an, a number of unique ways to celebrate our filmmakers as well as the content, this being one of them. So uh, we, we chose 10 of our filmmakers, yourself being one, and uh, it's just a little informal chat. So um, Let's start off by telling everyone a little bit about your film. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm Stefan and I did directed um, Flight. It's a short movie, 23 minutes long. And I produced it, I wrote it, and I directed it. Yeah, I did everything myself. <laughs> Not everything, um, but, but these um, departments. And it's about, it's, um, it's a dystopian world, yeah? And it's about um, a man um, who um, gets hurt at the beginning and then he strays um, through through the land and you don't really know the, 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 the whole movie, yeah? what's going on. But for me, it was something like a test, I would say, because you feel um, bad for him because he's crippled because of the, of, of the wounds um, at his leg. And then in the end, something special happens. And yeah, I don't want to um, tell you more. But yeah, it's something like, uh, like a test because how would the um, the, the, the people um, react on on this character when they know what happened? Mm -hmm. And for well, I, I would say for all filmmakers out there, I mean, let me start actually before I ask that question. Let me ask you this one: you as a as a filmmaker, when you decided that you were going to make a short film, you within reason could have told just about any story you wanted to tell about. Biscuits. You could have done what you wanted, but <laughs> yes, you decided to tell this story. Why was that? Why? Why this story? Why did that one stand out for you? Um, yeah. Honestly, I wanted to make a movie um, that takes place outside, not inside any rooms. And this um, this story um, came up for me um, two years ago or something like that. And I think it was good for that, also because of the money, <laughs> of course, yeah, because many locations aren't that easy, but uh, many locations outside are easier to find. But you, you, you need um, much time um, for location scouting. But if you um, decided which locations you, um, you want and you need, um, yeah, it's, it's cheaper to do it, <laughs> honestly. Yeah, that's a big, a big thing as well. You see, I think with um, whenever I run into uh, filmmakers that are, you know, they've got so much passion and so much enthusiasm, but maybe they don't have as much experience as maybe say some other filmmakers and, and they pitch me something and they're like, oh, it's in five locations and there's a shootout through Los Angeles and there's a helicopter chase over London. And I'm like, okay, cool. How much are you going to make it for? 5,000. No, you're not. <laughs> no, 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 no. So people like are like, oh, we could do this, this, this. But was was your film, did you decide to make, or how maybe rather should I say, was the story of your film even in part dictated because of budget? And you were like, because most, well, a lot of filmmakers, especially independent filmmakers, they will say, right, how much have I got? How much can I get? And what story can I tell with yeah. that money? And what's the best ways to allocate those, the, the, those funds, you know, to put 
all of it into one big scene uh, for all the CGI and the special effects or, or otherwise. And for Everything yourself with your film. Looks creepy. <laughs> exactly. So that's that's another thing as well. That's It's quite obvious. You know, you see films sometimes where they have one scene where the special effects is great and they spend all their money there. And then yeah. the special effects is non-existent or terrible in the other scenes. <laughs> yeah, and you yeah. tend to get uh, your your lens gets longer and yeah, the lights right. get dimmer. And <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So, um, no, for me, it was a little bit different, I would say, because um, it's my first movie as a director, but I'm working in the TV business for 15 years now um, as a producer and writer um, and also in the movie business. And so it was a little bit um, different for me because I know what I can do and what I'm capable capable of. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, the story I had in my head for you no know, three or four years, and then I wrote it down two years ago. And um, because of that, I um, decided to make this movie. And there wasn't um, budget so much in mind at the beginning because I know I have not that much here. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that's absolutely key with yourself. You you were, have worked in the film industry and the television industry for a long time and have have built up, I'm sure, a lot of colleagues and, and um, yeah. you know, uh, work, work colleagues. So so therefore, when you have connections, you can uh, you can alleviate some of your costs by getting good people in to do those things for you. Yeah. So yeah. it sounds to me like you had uh, you had quite a lot of your um, your pieces in place. Maybe more so than than someone else starting out without your experience in television and film. So, even that being said, what for you were the were the struggles or were the difficulties of making your movie? And the struggles were, um, of course, raising the money. And in Austria, it's a little bit different than in in Great Britain or in the States, because. Um, you can ask for money at the Austrian Film Institute where you can raise funds, yeah. But um, for short movies, it's not that easy. Um, most time, only students from the film academy um, will get um, money from them, but not um, when you do it um, on your own. So I had to um, raise the money, yeah, from my pocket, <laughs> from my wow. bank account. Self financed, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah absolutely. And um, but the, um, the the really problem was. Um, you know, I know many people and they said, yeah, it's a cool project, let, let, let's make it. But um, that they um, give me the time, yeah, I, I, that I need with them to work. Um, yeah, you know, that's then not that simple because um, one actor, he's really famous in, in, in Austria, but he has not that much time, yeah. But I wanted to rehearsal some scenes. And um, I think he gave me two days to rehearsal and then four days for the shooting, yeah. We had mm -hmm. only four days shooting it. And a good friend of mine um, who made, um, um, was the DOP of the movie. Um, yeah, he put so much effort in it. Yeah, that was, mm -hmm. that was great. Yeah. Well, that's key as well. Maybe you can talk to us a little bit about that for, for filmmakers out there who are, uh, who are either about to create a film, create a short a script or whatever it might be, or they're at the point where they, they have a script and they're like putting the pieces together now. And they're thinking to themselves, you know, I would love to have famous actor X in my movie. Mm -hmm. You did. You you had you had a famous actor in your movie. So how did you go? For, or, famous for Austria. Yeah. <laughs> sure, but even relevant yeah, to the country yeah. that you might be from. Yeah. But but that the, the the principle is the same nonetheless. So how did you go about finding that named talent? You know, and and maybe you can talk to us a little bit about um, because I, obviously getting named talent is very difficult. Uh, as you mentioned, their schedules can be can be quite grueling. Um, you know, their agents can be horrible to get through sometimes, et cetera, oh, yeah. et cetera. But if you can get past all of that, it is in a lot of times really worthwhile having that famous person because then that opens the doors for distribution. It opens the doors for other actors to come in. Oh, mm -hmm. such and such is in your movie. Oh, I'll do it too then. Yep. You know, so how did you find that process? Um, time consuming. <laughs> <laughs> right. It was really time consuming. Um, yeah, and I um, I searched the internet, I think one month for, for, for this actor. And then I, I found him. I had him in mind um, a month before, but I thought, okay, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> let's find another one but then I called his agent and his agent was okay and after this call with his agent um, I only um, talked to him in private every, every time and the agent was out and so it was much more easy to do it that's really nice that's the thing as well you know I found and I'm sure you'll agree um, when you 
do deal with famous actors or directors, producers, whatever it is, especially actors, you know, they seem to have this, uh, this idea to, you know, that they're, they're away from society that they, they you can't access them. Um, but the thing is when you get past the age and when you present that actor with a worthy project, that's the key. Everyone says they want Tom Cruise, but <laughs> is your project worthy of Tom Cruise? Yeah, yeah, that's the question. And if the answer is yes, Tom Cruise, of course, is just an example. Um, but these people tend to be really, really lovely. They tend to be really nice people. After you've yeah. passed all the agents and the managers and all that stuff, they're just artists at the end of the day. They love what they do. They're just yeah. really good at it and really famous. And therefore, they have gatekeepers. So yeah. you got to get past the gatekeepers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, the, that's, yeah. The, the, that's the most hard work, yeah. So now, uh, Stefan, tell us, though. so now you have made your movie, you have your famous actor inside, you've shot your movie, it's all done, it's, you've got a three post-production, you have a finished product, which mm -hmm. is a result in and of itself. Uh, so many projects don't even reach that stage. So you, now you have a finished project and you're like, hey, I think this is good. I think this is really good. So let me see if I can get it out to the world now. Let me see if I can get a screen, let it get into film festivals and all that, all that craziness, mm -hmm. because... You know, while that's a very important part of the process, I think potentially it's a little confusing um, to filmmakers. It seems just like the actors, it's this kind of shrouded thing that, oh, you need to know somebody to get into Venice or you need to do this to go to Sundance or whatever, whatever. How was that process for you? And as an independent filmmaker where your budget, as you mentioned, was limited, you would spend all of that on the screen. When you then get to the point where you're like, oh, film festivals cost some money. Whoops. Oh, uh, what do you do then? And which, for what reasons did the festivals become um, important to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, first of all, I cried a lot. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, um, I was searching for festivals in Austria first, yeah. Uh, this was the first step, but um, you know Austria is a small country um, um, in, in, in movie um, industries, and so there aren't that much um, festivals. And most of the festivals in our country are very artsy. Yeah? And um, Flight is a movie that isn't entirely artsy. Yeah? Of course, it's a, it has art aspects, yeah? but it's also it should um, entertain people. Mm -hmm. And it's something um, between um, um, mainstream and, and art movie, maybe. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And because of that, it wasn't that easy um, to get festivals in Austria. I, um, it was um, shown screened in, on two festivals. And then I um, got this um, great page, um, 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 Film Freeway where I um, searched for festivals where I think, um, yeah, okay, um, flight could be um, great there. And yeah, so I sent it to many festivals and not so many, but <laughs> some of them, yeah, mm -hmm. um, sent me an answer back. Yeah? This, this was the way. And of course, you have to pay for it. <laughs> and what was the important things to you when you were looking at the various festivals? You thought, you know what, maybe this one, maybe this one, maybe this one. Mm -hmm. what, were the, what was it that the festivals offered or what was the things that you were like, you know, I have a limited budget, so I, I would love to send to them all. But I can't, yeah. I can only send to say six, for example. So yeah. you have to choose six. And then there's different elements become important to you. Oh, this one really looks like they support independent film. This one has a distribution arm. This yeah. one has great media. What was the important things to you? Um, the important thing for me was um, maybe that they are um, um, screening horror movies too, yeah, because um, Flight is a little bit in this, in this genre. It's not only a horror genre, yeah, but it's in this genre, it's, it's, it's in this movie. And then, um, of course, in, 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 which, in which country will it be shown? Yeah, um, Can I go there? And then when I, <laughs> that's the big problem. And then came um, Corona. <laughs> um, when I um, send it to the most festivals and then I thought okay what are we doing now yeah because there wasn't um, the opportunity first um, to screen it online because um, many of the festivals said okay we will cancel it and delay it for the next year mm -hmm. and this is now um, the second year I think um, yeah. with Corona um, with the online screenings and this was one of the um, the hardest things for me to um, um, to go through yeah because you have this film where you think, okay, it's great, yeah? And then you um, um, and paid for it um, at the festivals. And then they say, okay, no, <laughs> there mm -hmm. would be no, no movie this year, yeah? 
But first of all, uh, I, 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 I look where where the festivals are and which in which country and which genre, and also if there is a distribution possibility because um, the festivals are great, but um, a distrib distribution possibility too. Yeah, that's even better, I think. Absolutely. I mean, I totally agree with you. And, um, you know, the team here at the GMAs as well, we, we thought quite long and hard about that because, you know, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, some festivals were like, okay, that's it. We're going online. Here's a PDF done. Uh, and we yeah. were like, that's not fair. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, okay. I, we understand that COVID is a big problem for us too, but at the same yeah. time, you've spent, <coughs> excuse me, you've spent a long time making your movie and you deserve to have it screened. Mm -hmm. um, so, the guys put together our, our screening program, which we, you can see your movie this coming uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. I can't believe it's tomorrow. Yeah, yeah September 16th. So uh, the GMA screening program launches tomorrow and will run through uh, September 23rd. And it'll be streaming live on FlickFest here in London. Mm -hmm. uh, or, sorry, in Los Angeles. Uh, Film Ahoy here in London. Mm -hmm. And uh, also on the GMA player as well. So, so if you are uh, successful in progressing to the next stage, which will be announced this coming September 20th, so this coming Monday, mm -hmm. uh, the nominees, then we will offer you six months distribution, paid distribution on those platforms. Yeah, and uh, if you are lucky enough to go on to be a winner, then you'll get a, a rolling one year contract with which mm -hmm. you can terminate whenever you see, you know, whenever you choose. Mm -hmm. um, so this was one of the elements that we felt was, you know, we wanted to celelebrate the filmmaker with the, with the GMA pick sticks as we're doing now. And, but also the film work, not just during, uh, you know, one evening of a red carpet, but also mm -hmm. to get it out there. So the world can see it, everybody, mm -hmm. including the ones who, who, who weren't able to attend the festival for whatever reasons. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's a great way you guys do it. Yeah, um, I really appreciate it. Thanks for, for, for all the opportunities you gave us filmmakers. You're so welcome. I mean, your film deserves it. And, and uh, that was the one thing I think that we have noticed more than maybe anything else, actually, since we started doing this, is the, the quality of the film work from all over the world uh, mm -hmm. is honestly, truly amazing. It, it, most mm -hmm. of the stuff, really a huge, very, very high percentage of the, of the stuff that we get through um, would rival anything that you see on television without yeah, a problem, yeah. without yeah. a problem. Um, yeah, that's so that's really quite inspiring, you know, and we need to nurture that, that future of filmmakers. We need to make our screens more inclusive. We need to make our screens more diverse. And I think by doing that, we can only have a richer and better industry. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. That's, That's certainly right. your opinion. Stefan, it was an absolute pleasure. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. And uh, you. your, uh, your video will be out on our social media and on our GMA um, uh, media page on the website in the coming yeah. days. Of course, we'll, we'll let you know, of course. And um, yeah, good luck for your upcoming uh, nominees this coming Monday. And of course, as well with the, with the awards. And, and I do hope we'll, we'll see you sooner rather than late, later in London. And, yeah, uh, yeah. It would be great. We'll, yeah. we'll walk a carpet one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Thank <laughs> good. Thanks. Stefan, absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Bye. Take Bye. care. Wie wir es nicht führen. Seid ihr alleine? Keeping independent, truly independent cinema alive and celebrating it.